Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'm going to be giving you an update on the next release for Fluid Designer. I'm not only going to be doing a demonstration of some of the new features, but I'm also going to be explaining how to download the application for not only Windows, but also Mac and Linux operating systems. Now before I get into all of that, let me give a quick explanation of what Fluid Designer is for anyone who is unfamiliar. Fluid Designer is an application that's built on top of Blender that gives users an intuitive and efficient way of designing spaces in 3D. While most of the tools and library items were designed specifically for interior scenes, with Fluid Designer being built on top of Blender, you're given access to all of Blender's advanced functionality, which allows you to design anything you can imagine. If you're unfamiliar with Blender, Blender is an open source application that gives you access to features like modeling, photorealistic rendering, animation, video editing, compositing, and that barely scratches the surface of what Blender is capable of. So with all that functionality available, it not only makes Blender a very powerful tool, but also a very complicated tool as well. So Fluid Designer was developed to give new users an easier way to begin learning how to use these tools while providing advanced users a quicker and smarter way to design. This was done by not only simplifying the user interface, but by streamlining the user experience with the use of library add-ons. So since Fluid Designer is a custom build of Blender, we provided add-ons more access to Blender's default functionality. And this allows developers to create specific types of add-ons, which are called library add-ons. These not only contain libraries of specific types of items, but they also contain the functionality needed to extend the library, as well as the tools needed to work with the items within that library. By default, Fluid Designer comes with four library add-ons. We have the Object Library, which allows you to maintain a library of objects that can be quickly dragged into the scene. We have the Group Library, which allows you to maintain a library of groups, which are made up of several objects, and these are combined together to create complex parametric assets. We have the Material Library, which allows you to maintain a library of materials that can be dragged and dropped onto the objects within the scene. And we have the World Library, which allows you to maintain a library of environments that not only help light the scene, but also provide your scene with a realistic backdrop. Now rather than just talking about these, let's go ahead and jump into the application and do a quick demonstration. So for this demonstration, I'm going to go and recreate a scene that looks something like what we see here on the splash screen, because all of the assets that are used in this image come with the default sample library that's shipped with Fluid Designer. So here, let's go and take a look on the left-hand side of our interface. We can see that these are all the available library add-ons that we have installed right now. These are just the default ones that come with the application, and we can switch between the different libraries by just selecting these icons, and we can see that we get different assets here, and we also have different categories that we can switch between. Now before I start dragging in items from my library here, let's go ahead and just create the room layout that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to my add menu here, and I'm going to go and draw a wall. And I'll go ahead and accept the defaults and click OK, and that draws our first wall there. And let's just go and draw one more, but this time we'll go ahead and place it to the right of that one. And we'll click OK. And so now we just have this simple L-shaped room here that we can work with. But let's go and make this a little bit um, bigger here. So let's go ahead and select this first wall segment and right click. And we'll go ahead and just increase its X dimension to be right about there. And then we'll go and do the same thing for this one here as well. Okay, so now we have a little bit larger room to work with, but let's go ahead and create a floor plane by going to the Add menu and then selecting Create Floor Plane. Okay, so now we have the initial room layout that we're going to use, and now we can start adding in all of our assets. So first things first, let's go ahead and add a material to our floor plane here. So let's go and switch to our material library, and we're already in our flooring category, so let's go and just choose one of these materials here. We'll just go and drag this into the scene, and we'll just left-click on the object we want to assign it to. Okay, that assigns that material to that object. Now keep in mind that these library add-ons aren't just a list of assets that you can use. We also have the tools that allow you to extend the libraries and also modify the items that came from that library. So here if we open up the tools panel, we can see that depending on what library we have active, we're given different tools that we can work with. So here if we select the material library, we can pull down this panel right here, and this shows all the available materials in the scene. And so right now we have this one hardwood in here. But we can delete the material or we can access its properties. And so if we select this icon, here we can adjust the mapping of how this image is applied to the objects within the scene. We can also change its rotation, and we just have quick access to these properties right from this interface right here. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just collapse this panel, and we'll go ahead and get rid of our tools panel, and we'll just go ahead and add in some more assets. So we'll go ahead and switch over to our group library here, and let's go ahead and go to the furniture category, 
And let's go ahead and drop in this sofa here. So you can see as we move our cursor around, we can see where this item is going to be placed within our scene. It also snaps to the walls. Uh, let's go and just place it right here in this back corner for right now. Now, apart from just using the manipulator handles here to change its location, you can obviously, of course, right click, bring up its properties to modify its location rotation. But we also have custom properties for each asset within the library here. So here, if you click this icon, you can access and see all of the custom properties that you can work with. So here we can change the number of seats that are available for the sofa. Um, we can also change the shape of the sofa. So here, if we wanted to make it an L-shaped sofa, we can do that. And there's also several other options that we can use to really fine tune the way that we want these assets to look within our scene. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just use a straight sofa with these three segments. But let's go and drop in some more items. Let's go and drop in this metal frame coffee table here. Let's go and just place it right about there. And here I'll just go and right click to bring up its properties. We'll adjust its X dimension and also its Y dimension here. And let's go ahead and change the Z dimension quite a bit as well to kind of make it more in line with that sofa. That's about right. Maybe I'll move it back just a bit. Okay, so that's looking about what I want there. Next, let's go and add in some windows on this back wall right here. So let's go ahead and switch to our windows category. And I'm just going to use this fixed window. So I'll just go and drag this into the scene. You can see that, you know, it snaps to the walls just like everything else. We can just go and left click to place it there. And I'm going to go and position this quite a bit further down here. And I'll right click to bring up its properties. And let's go ahead and change its Z dimension. So let's make it, let's go and put 75 inches in there. And let's ask, access the custom properties for this item here. And let's go ahead and turn on some blinds so you can enable different options for this. We can also pull the blinds. If you want to adjust you know, how it visually looks here, we can close the blinds if we want to. And this is really helpful when you're really trying to fine tune the lighting um, for these objects here. You can get some really cool effects by having some light rays you know, shine in from the exterior here. We can also change the style. So let's go ahead and switch to four lights. We also have this border style. But for right now, I'm going to use this four lights option. And with these groups, with these parametric groups, we call them assemblies. And we have tools for these assemblies that we can use. So if we go to the tools menu, I can access the tools or assembly tools right here. And what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this. So I'm going to go and select this copy selected assembly item. And we'll just drag it out here. And so now we have a duplicate of that. And we can do the same thing here. We can go ahead and access that same command and then just drag it out here. Okay, so that's about what I want to see, but these windows look a little bit uniform here. I want to change, you know, how much of the blinds we're seeing for each of these. And rather than left-clicking, right-clicking, and accessing the prompts this way, we can also access all the properties here in the Properties panel on the right-hand side of the interface. So if we click this plus icon here, here we can access properties about the individual object that we have selected, which right now is these blinds here. And we can, you know, see the materials, the constraints, modifiers, the mesh data. There's all sorts of um, advanced properties that we can access within here. Um, we also have properties for the currently selected assembly, which right now is just this window. And so here we can see, you know, the sizes of that window, or we can access the prompts here. And this is the same interface that you use if you want to create more prompts and add additional functionality to these assets. But what I want to do here is you can see that now if I, you know, change the location of where these blinds are, I can just select through these assets and then just kind of make them, you know, a little bit different for each one. That way it's not so uniform across here. Now, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and collapse this panel here. And now let's go ahead and add in some more assets. So let's go and switch over to the object library. And I'm going to go and place some books on this table here. So go and just drag in this book. I'm just going to place it right about there. We're going to place one book right on top of that. We can right click and maybe just change the rotation. That way it's not perfectly lined up with the other one there. And next, let's go ahead and place some other objects on here. Let's go to the decoration objects category. And let's go and just place this chess set right on here as well. Okay, so that's looking all right to me. So let's go now just place some picture frames on this back wall right here. So let's go to the picture frames category. And to place them, I'm going to go to the view menu and just view this scene from the left. That way I kind of have this straight shot to, you know, place all my objects on. So let's go and just drag these in here. Place one right there. All right, I'm going to place another one right about here. And then we'll go and finish this up with, let me put this other picture frame right above these other ones here. And then we can always just shift select all of these and just kind of fine tune where you want them. Okay, that looks decent enough for me. Okay, next let's go ahead and add in some other objects here. Let's go to the wall lamps category and let's go ahead and 
add in one of these contemporary wall lamps. So let's go ahead and put this one to the scene. And here, if we hold down Shift, we can place multiple items. So I'm going to hold Shift, and then I'm going to left click. You can see that you can just place multiple items just like that, and it can escape to cancel that command. And maybe I'll just kind of drag this one over just a little bit. Okay, perfect. Next, let's go ahead and add in maybe a, a clock and a plant over here. So let's go to our decoration objects again. Here we have this large clock that we can just place right there. And then here in our plants category, let's go and just place this large house plant maybe right about there as well. Okay, so this is looking not so bad. To finish this off, let's go ahead and add a ceiling to this room. So let's go back to the group library, and here in the ceilings category, let's go ahead and use this coffered ceiling. So if we just drag this into the scene, you can see we can do the same thing. Let's just go and place it right about there. And if we right click to bring up its properties, rather than just you know stretching out the dimension here, you can also just turn on the empties that control the size. And so here you can just toggle these on and off right here, and then here you can just select these objects, and now you can just visually stretch them. And so what I'll go ahead and do is just move this right about there. You can also snap these. So here if I just type G to activate my move command, here I can type G and then control and then just snap right to that corner. So you can just kind of quickly place these objects and get them exactly sized the way that you want. So to one more asset that I want to add in is a bookshelf. So let's go ahead and go to our furniture category and let's go ahead and use this bookshelf. And we'll just go ahead and drag this into the scene and place it right about there. But let's make this quite a bit bigger here. Let's go ahead and right click to bring up its properties. And we'll go ahead and stretch out the X dimension and also the Z dimension. You can see that no matter how big this bookshelf gets here, there's always going to be enough books to fill it. And you can also change you know, the shelves and also the divisions to really fine tune the way that you want this to look. So I think that's looking about right to me. So just to kind of get an idea of where we're at, let's go ahead and just go into a rendered view. So let's go ahead and switch from material view to render view here. And here, since we're using cycles, we can see that the uh, it's using the path tracing. And it takes a few moments just to kind of get a visualization of what it's going to look like. And it could take a few minutes, definitely, to get, to get a really nice, clean rendering. Um, but before we do that, I also notice here we just have a gray background. So let's go ahead and use our world library to just put something out there to make it a little bit more realistic. So let's just go ahead and drag one of these into the scene here. And so now we have something outside the window just to kind of bring a little bit more life to the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and fast forward in time here. That way you don't have to wait for this to render just to kind of get an idea of what this would look like um, after a few minutes of rendering here. All right, so it's been rendering for a little while here, and it can definitely use a little bit more time, but hopefully you can see how helpful these library add-ons are, especially when you're laying out scenes. Because in a very short amount of time and with very little effort, we're able to put together a good start for an interior scene. But the power of these add-ons really come with the functionality that allows you to create and maintain your own assets. So really quick, let's go and switch gears and just show you how that kind of works within these library add-ons. So let's say that you have some assets that you want to save to these library add-ons here. So maybe it's an object that you've modeled or maybe something you've downloaded from BlendSwap or from the Blender Cloud and you want to save it to your library. Well, all you need to do is just open up that file that you've been working on or that you downloaded. Here I have just a model of Suzanne here on my C drive. I'll go ahead and open that up. So here's just a simple Suzanne model. And let's say I want to save this to my object library and the decoration objects category. Well, here if I open up the tools panel, which again shows all of the options for the selected add-on that we have, we can go and open up the objects and category. And here, if we go ahead and use this pull-down menu, we can click this save selected object to library. And then just this just lets us know, are you sure you want to save the object Suzanne to the category decoration objects? And we can also check this option here to automatically create the thumbnail. And then we just click OK. And that just opens up Blender in the background. It indexes everything. It also creates the rendering that we're going to need for the thumbnail. And then when that menu goes away here, if we just go ahead and refresh our menu, we can see that now we have a new model in our objects library. So here, if we just go and open up a new file, go and switch to our objects library, go to our decoration object scene, and here maybe I'll go and just add in a mesh plane. That way I can add this to somewhere. We just drag these in, and you can see now we can just place these anywhere that we want within the scene. So that's how that works, and it's pretty easy. And all of the library add-ons work very similar. We will have an in-depth tutorial on all of the library add-ons on how to work with all of the different options within the tools panel here. 
So like I've mentioned before, everything that I've shown you so far comes with the free version of Fluid Designer, but we will have additional add-ons that can be purchased. For example, Microfilm will be releasing a cabinet library add-on that's not just a library of cabinets. While there are hundreds of new assets that come with that add-on, it also comes with a whole new set of tools that gives you advanced placement options, the ability to quickly extrude moldings, material management, specification groups that allow you to adjust the construction of the cabinets, a functionality that allows you to create custom cabinets, as well well as the ability to export your finished designs to Microvelm's manufacturing tools, which provides cabinet makers, cut list, G-code generation, estimating reports, saw optimization, and all sorts of other professional tools. We're going to have this add-on available on the Microvelm web store soon, but before we do, we wanted to make sure that all of the free tools are working perfectly before we start selling additional add-ons. So if you'd like to download the free version of Fluid Designer, you can go to the Microvelm website, and up at the top here on the Products tab, you can go to Fluid Designer, and then select Download. This will bring you to the Fluid Designer download page, where you can select the operating system that you're using, and then select the appropriate download, and then the download will begin instantly. Now, since Fluid Designer is a modified version of Blender, we also provide the source code here if you would rather just download the source code and compile the application yourself. And lastly, I would recommend that everybody sign up for support. Here, if you go to this tab, here you can get access to additional video tutorials as well as the Fluid Designer community forums. And it's free. All you need to do is enter your name and email address. You can also check this button if you would like to be informed when additional library add-ons become available. You can enter in any comments and then just click the Submit My Registration button. And right now we're putting together this site, but we expect to have it available very soon. So we hope you enjoy using the application, and if you have any feedback, please let us know. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you would like, you can subscribe to this channel for more information on this project.